We have two kinds of hummingbirds here. One is the rufous hummingbird. It's a smaller one, kind of a brownish red one, and it's only got a big orange spot on its gorget, but it's a tough guy in the yard. The other one is the anise hummingbird. Right now, the male's whole head is red and their gorget is all red, and they stay year round. Now, if you want to attract the rufous hummingbirds, they fly all the way back to Central America and Mexico. They come back in the spring. You want to plant things that are going to be a bloom right when they come back. So they pick your garden for their territory. So here's one of my all time favorites here. <laughs> this is flowering currants native to Washington, but they see this, they just go banana because they love the tweedle out of it. Another great one are these breeding hearts that grow tall. The hummingbirds just adore these things that go to them. All salvias attract hummingbirds, but my by far biggest favorite is called hot lips. I counted how many flowers were on my hot lips last August. 12,782,000. No wonder hummingbirds can't resist those things. Another great one is the hardy fuchsia. And hummingbirds just go gaga over that nectar. If you followed my advice and plant all these wonderful hummingbird attracting plants in your garden, those things are going to be zooming around doing aerial acrobatics. You're going to have to wear a hard hat every time you go out to the garden. Masisco says if you use a feeder in the winter, be sure to keep it full. Apparently, hummingbirds rely on that food supply once they get used to it.